Just wanted to do a video update on my vegetable garden this year. This is 2014, August 20th. Um, just want to do a couple notes and just stuff I've learned, lessons I've learned this year. Um, one thing I started this year was, you can see out there, the bottom strip, you can see a separate board. I raised my bed 15 inches and added a bunch of new soil. A lot more organics in the soil. Kind of got on Craigslist that had a mix he just delivered. And also created this little bed here, 8x4 bed, with the leftover wood and scraps and soil I had. And I also bought a couple of these self-watering containers. Um, what I found, well, my yard is a little shady. Probably get like four to six hours of sun, just depending on the season, the time of the season. That's in the summertime, so I don't have as much sun as a lot of people do. So I have to grow my stuff a little longer and just be a little bit more uh, aware of the varieties I pick and what I try to grow. Um, so with the containers I found this year, I planted an eggplant in one, put it in the front yard where it's sunnier. I put a jalapeno plant in the front yard where it's sunnier. And this is my backyard. This is, had a basil there with some kale in it and a bell pepper plant with uh, some kale in it also. The bell pepper plant grew great. I mean, look at the, the leaves and it's very healthy. Um, I tried that same bell pepper plant in my raised garden and it did terrible. The leaves kept falling off. Um, I eventually just gave up on it because it wasn't putting any fruit out or starting any fruit. But this plant um, put off three monsters, went all the way to red. Uh, I've got a big green one in there now and two or three more that will probably be done by October 30th. But one problem I had with them is it's got a rot spot on the bottom. I don't know if that's a, uh, a chemical or imbalance or fungus or what. I just need to research that more. But other than the little rotten spots in the bottom, uh, I mean, it's, it was edible. I just chopped that little piece off and ate it and I didn't die, so I guess it was fine. Um, but other than that, the plant was very healthy, the fruit was healthy, it just had that rotten spot on the tips, on the ends. Um, the eggplants, um, here's some examples of the eggplants up around. This big one, I mean they're monsters. That came out of my main bed over there, the raised bed. The two little ones came out of the container, these little peach containers, but in the front yard. So you can see the fruit's very restricted by, I guess, maybe the root mass, or maybe it's not a constant water. I don't know. I don't think I watered them any different, my main bed compared to the containers, but maybe it's just they get root bound in there. I mean, the, the plant in the back yard, in the front yards, small compared to this monster in my backyard. Um, I've got two, three, that's the, the plant I was showing, the big one, or the uh, fruit was the third big fruit I got off of it. And here's another monster here. This will be another big one. That will be four, five, six, seven, and one over here hiding eight. And it's starting another one here, nine, ten. So I'll probably get ten off of it by the end of the year. So you can see the this thing's gotten so big it's falling out and I'm having to support it with chairs. Um, also you can see the holes in the plant. A couple of times during the year I had some, those little black little beetles start attacking it. 
There might be a few on here, we'll see. Yeah, there's a little booger right there, you can see him. But um, I ended up putting some seven dust sprinkled on it. I did that twice this year and it seems to have kept the plant healthy enough to keep going. I'm gonna try some organic powder based stuff next year since I've heard so much bad stuff about seven dust. But the eggplants, it's definitely a great plant to do with the amount of sun and the type of soil I've got here. You can see it's just going nuts. These are jalapeno plants. They started off really slow. You can see, maybe you can't see, it doesn't have any leaves in the bottom. All the leaves fell off and it didn't really start fruiting until it got a little older and finally the leaves held. And I don't know why it was having so much trouble holding its leaves early on. I don't think I was over watering it. I don't think it was overly wet or overly dry. Or um, but the plants in the front yard, they seem to hold their leaves, or I did a uh, jalapeno plant in the container, and uh, it seemed to be a healthier plant, but I don't think the fruit was any different, the amount of fruit. So I can decide to do more in containers to free up some space in here, or do them again in here. It worked out well. I had plenty of jalapenos. You can see the carrots I planted. That was from the beginning of the spring. I let mine grow a long time just because it takes longer since I have so much shade. Um, I probably could pull them out now. I checked one yesterday and it was pretty big. So I might start yanking some of those out before they get all too nasty and rough. Um, here I had a squash plant in the corner, a yellow squash plant in the corner, and a yellow squash plant over there. But I ended up getting uh, white powdery mildew, so I yanked those and gave up on them. You can see any of the broadleaf, you know, cucumber style. Uh, this is butternut squash, cantaloupes over there, the cucumbers I tried. They all got mildew, that white powdery mildew, and I had to yank them up and give up on them. I planted this guy probably beginning of June just for shits and giggles to see what it did and you can see the white powdery mildew got on it and it's really affecting it. I got this little teeny butternut squash so I read online that um, maybe a mixture of neem oil and water and baking soda can help keep that to a minimum so I might try that next year. Uh, if it doesn't work I'm gonna give up on those and just focus on my greens and my eggplants and tomatoes and carrots and green beans and stuff I know grows well. I don't like fighting it if I don't need to. But this is a cantaloupe I put out, you know, June-ish, just because I was just trying to fill up some space in my yard. There's another one. I didn't expect much out of these. They were just kind of an afterthought. And I think it would do fine here as long as, I mean, you see it put off a big fruit, but that uh, white powdery mildew is just really zapping the plant and keeping it from doing as good as it could do. But here's my 8x4 new little raised garden. Um, okra is the big plant. has done great. I mean, I have so much okra, I give half it away to friends and neighbors. Um, I have okra there, and I also have it far side over here. You can see it along the fence there next to the grapes. Um, that's all the okra I'll ever need. <laughs> uh, it'd stick a lot in the freezer and I'll probably try to pickle some of that before the end of the season. Um, I tried beets this year in between. You can see the beets here. They've only gotten to about a quarter 50 cent size and um, I don't know if it's really worth it. I probably need to do a row in my main garden. I get a little more sun over there and this okra is probably taking away some of the sunlight, a lot of the sunlight. Um, what did I have here? Oh yeah, I had, I had to green beans. They did well and gave me a lot of beans. I ended up pulling those once they gave up. 
and planted this uh, lettuce here at the beginning of August. So this is about 20 days worth of growth on the uh, lettuce. Um, I get started a lot earlier than other people just because I don't have too much direct sun so my let lettuce lasts a lot longer and I can get started earlier on a lot of my fall crops. Um, this is my kale that uh, I got some kale from my back neighbor and I think this is probably the same stuff. Uh, blue wrinkled dwarf or something like that. Um, but it's done great. I mean it's a little stringy. You can see the, the arms of the leaves are a little longer. But it's done good. I think it's just a little stringer because it's fighting for uh, sun a little bit more than maybe a wide open bed. But between this kale that I planted by seed and this kale which I've got just sporadically through my garden one here, a couple there, there. I probably got 15 to 25 of those little dwarf plants and again that's plenty of kale for me and for my friends and neighbors. Um, I planted a couple sunflowers in here that I found or that I just pulled out my bird seed just for fun and it looks like uh, you know, the birds are getting in here and eating them and um, it also just brought some cool color to the uh, garden you know, during the spring and summer. Um, marigolds, I planted these because I've always heard that they're a good uh, way to have a natural means to thwart the, the insects coming in your garden. Uh, the kale, you can see how this is eaten up. I get the little cabbage worm in here and might be able to find one. When I'm out here to show, just a green little worm. Um, if I don't get here out here every day, they'll pop up. But usually I'm out in my garden every day, so I can catch them when they're young before they get out here. But I haven't checked my kale in about two or three days, and that's what happens. But as long as you're persistent, and you're out here, you won't have any problems with the kale. And if you plant enough plants, you know, who cares if one gets it every so often. Um, but the marigolds, those are fun just because they might work and if they don't they add some color to your garden. Plus I like to throw them there to my chickens, they like them. Um, my main garden, like I said, I had lettuce here. It did good spring all the way to the middle of summer. It the stuff that started bolting, I'd give it to my chickens, yanked it up, and ended up planting some Swiss chard about August 1st. And This is a couple weeks, three weeks of growth. It's starting to get hardy, so I'll probably start harvesting some, some here soon. It, it's good. It tastes like spinach a little bit, and since I can't grow spinach for some reason, it's probably just me not being a... not knowing what I'm doing. But I've tried a couple times and it just doesn't want to grow well. I'm going to try a couple different varieties in the fall or in the next spring. See if I can get a better growth out of my spinach. But uh, Swiss chard looks like it's going to be a good option. Um, my turnips. I just planted these way too dense and I think the birds are getting in here. Yeah, something's getting in here. But it's the first time I tried turnips. I think some of them will do all right. If not, I'll just get them my chickens. They like them. Um, in this garden, or in this part of the garden, I had. Oh yeah, my cucumbers I had there, taking up a, a good chunk here. I I was all excited about having some pickled cucumbers and more cucumbers than I could eat, and I got that white powdery mildew and end up yanking them all up and giving up on them. Uh, this is the trellis I had on them. I'll just repurpose that next year for some peas or something. But um, I planted these bush beans. Well, I had bush beans right here. They burned out. So uh, once they burned out, I planted some more here. 
and they're just starting to put beans off you can see so that'll be my second flush of beans which next year I'm gonna try to get three flushes I'll start you know one row will be my first week later I'll do another one out in my yard there somewhere and third I'll finish here or you know something like that that way I'll have beans all year um, my tomatoes at the better boys one two three four plants and then a sweet 100 both of those are hybrids and they've done really well and the this hybrid sweet 100 here is ridiculous I mean it it's grown up fell over so that's 15 feet tall plant just kind of growing all over the place that one just kicks ass every year it just always gives me more fruit than I know what to do with the uh, hybrids they do well too but I get <clears throat> birds in there pecking my fruit so I tried to rig up some bird net here and you can see but ended up getting too many little holes and crevices for them to crawl in I think if I get smarter about that I'll be able to keep them out better but uh, that's plenty of tomatoes by the time the birds started pecking at them and the holes started getting in my netting from it just falling over it I was sick of them anyways so um I think next year I'll probably just get a little bit better net build and structure built for those and I'll, I'll be a lot better at the bird situation there's supposed to be my bird watcher but he gets lazy on the job don't you um trying to think of any other lessons learned I've had that's about it I'll just try to rotate my plants oh yeah uh, this guy's been eating up he's about done but I planted some red Russian kale August 1st and this is two or three weeks later or three weeks later and a couple small ones over there trying they just I need to get some water on them I've been a little lazy with the water lately um, oh yeah these red scarlet runner beans I planted that bunch right there right in the beginning of the spring May 1st and it grew all the way up there now it's falling back down coming in the yard so I think that's going to be a good place to get me a, some extra cooking beans and um and I planted this guy like a month later just because I finally got ahead of my garden and had some time to do some extra stuff and I took some of that extra bamboo and fencing and made that little trellis. I think if I get that started a little earlier, I'll have more beans on it by this time of the year. But um, I'm starting to get some beans on it. I think next year I'll have some in ground plants have some uh, extra um, eggplants out here tomato plants I'll probably pull over here just to rotate them from this other side just kind of do a mirror flip flop of my garden and uh, I think that's about it and just try to get some kind of white powdery mildew control going the neem oil baking powder water mixture I need to research that more and because uh, otherwise I'm just gonna give up on cucumbers and squash and I mean even I plant squash on the side of my yard around here because I get I've got some fig trees and little fruit trees over there and you know by the time that white mill powdery mildew gets a hold of it I'll have about five squash so it's still worth it but in my main garden they take up so much space so I just I'm about to give up on them um, and also I need to plant some I'll probably plant a couple sprigs of garlic in there just to get that going for the winter other than that that's my vegetable garden oh yeah these guys sunchokes this is the first time I tried the sunchokes 
heard a lot of people on YouTube doing those and having success. So we'll see what they give me. I put about, I think I bought a pound's worth, gave about a half a pound away in containers to friends, and this is probably about a half a pound's worth, so I'll weigh them out at the end of the season to see how they look. Um, my basil did really good in my container. I'll do basil and herbs in container because that, that did great. You see I cut it back. I'm hoping that I'll get some sprouting out of here and maybe get a, a fall crop of that. Um, parsley, I planted that here in the beginning of spring. This is actually, it's burned out and come back again. I think it's doing better now than it was in the in the spring. We'll see. Um, it's just not enough to really make any to bully or anything out of. I got a squirrel. Go get him, buddy. That that's about it. That's all I can think of right now. Um, see the okra's done great. I need to get out here and pick it, but I always leave a couple of these big ones, about ten big ones, just to. So I can reseed next year. It's just an easy plant to reseed. Pull the beets into the main garden. Keep doing my kale. Lettuce is done good here. I think I'm just gonna find some more green leafy species that I can put in my main garden and get away from the cucumbers and squash. Alright, well, that's it for now. Peace out.